Hello. In the last segment of The Art of Thinking, we discussed the classical principles of thought. In this section, we will discuss propositions and arguments. These are the basic building blocks of the way we reason through things and discuss them and debate them one with another. A proposition is a statement that can be either true or false. So, today is sunny outside. That's a proposition because it can be either true or false. Perhaps you could say you should sharpen it by saying it's sunny here. But nevertheless, it's a statement that can be either true or false. Shut the door is not a proposition. It's a command. It can be neither true or false. What time is it? Is a question, not a proposition. It can be neither true nor false. A proposition is a statement that can be either true or false. Now, we'll see in our, well, we'll see just now, but certainly more in the next segment on deductive argument, that when a proposition is used in an argument, it's called a premise. When a proposition is used in an argument, it's called a premise of that argument. Now, it's also important to understand that premises can be either general or universal. A universal premise has the structure, all A's are B's, right? So you could say, uh, all dogs are canines. Dog being A, canine being B. It's universal because it, can, it includes every member of the class, all of them. Now, in a universal proposition, if you can find one counterexample, the proposition is false because in that case, not all A's would be B's. A general proposition takes the form, in general, A's are B's. General propositions can be true even when there are exceptions. You can say, for example, in general, men are larger than women. Okay, but it's not true to say every woman is smaller than every man or every man is larger than every woman because there are plenty of women who are larger than men. There are small men and, and there are larger women and the, the women can be larger than men. But in general, in other words, if you say, if the, if the proposition is true of 50% plus one of the population under consideration, it's true. Now a mistake that people often make and it's actually we made on, on, on both sides of a conversation. Somebody makes a, con, a, a statement like men are larger than women. And you could easily hear that claim as being universal. And so you start looking for counterexamples. But what the speaker meant to make was a general statement. He just didn't indicate that. Maybe he's not even aware of the distinction. But it's failure to be aware of this distinction that creates a lot of confusion when people are talking to each other. Arguments. An argument, as we use the term in practical thinking, is a reason or an arrangement of reasons aimed at demonstrating that an action or an idea or another argument is either right or wrong. Arguments come in a variety of forms. The ones we're going to consider are deductive arguments and inductive arguments. But in both kinds of argument, we, uh, we, we marshal premises. We put premises together to reason to a conclusion, and the conclusion is then supported by these premises. We must also be aware, um, whenever we are making an argument, and this takes us back to the last segment when we wrestled a bit with the principle of the excluded middle. When we are making arguments, we can be either right or wrong. We can be right. If we're only partly right, we're also partly wrong. Or we could be completely wrong. We must bear in mind that this is a possibility. Now, we stress this because we find more and more in our society an unwillingness among people when they're talking with each other to consider the possibility that they could be wrong. But we have to be able to consider that possibility if we're going to treat our countrymen um, with the respect and the courtesy um, and the inclusion that we all say that we want. If you hold a view of something and someone explains to you through an argument that the view is incorrect, and this would assume that you aren't being thwarted by your worldview, then he has done you a favor, right? This is so because as vitamins and proteins are nourishment of the body, 
Truth is the nourishment of the mind. Here again, worldviews can clash, but if there's something that every mind wants to know, it's the truth. Nobody wants to think that he's walking around in his life with falsehoods in his head because we want to know the truth. And thus thinking should place us accurately in touch with the world outside of our minds. It is very hard for us to make of this world a proper home for human beings if we don't have some kind of an understanding of it. And that requires that we're able to reason and argue about it carefully. In the next segment, we will look at deductive arguments.